Hello friends, this video on communication systems part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so with this, let us see what are the different modes of communication over large distances. Because when it is, when I'm talking about a very small distance, things are pretty simple, right? Everything can happen, I mean, face to face. Whatever you want to share, you can just share it to the other person. Now, let us see what what have come up as modes of communication over very large distances. So when we look at examples, one would be the telephone, right? I think a very, very important mode of communication these days. For example, most of us, I mean, you, you must be knowing somebody in your family who stays away from your place. So these days, everybody is like, let us suppose there's a family. The son stays somewhere in Brazil. And the family stays somewhere in India. But they don't feel that they are so far away because every now and then they keep speaking with each other over the phone. So telephone was one mode of communication which was invented a couple of years ago by Graham Bell to enable people to talk to other persons over large distances. Now gradually the telephones have been taken over, over by the mobile phones or the cell phones. Now they are wireless they are mobile, you can carry them in your pockets, you can, it, it gives you that mobility of calling anytime you want, right? So not only, it, is, it does not only helps you in communicating with other people, these days there are several other applications which are found on the mobile phones. You have various types of games, you have the option to chat with people, you have option to send messages. So what are they? They are also mode of communicating with people. You are basically sharing or exchanging information with others. Similarly, you can take the example of the television. So whatever information you get, that is again over large distances. The radio, the internet, which has become again one of the basic necessities of our life these days. Anything and everything we want to know about, we can get it in the internet. Right? So these have come up as some of the important modes of communication these days over large distances, right? Now let us see, these things were not there since the very beginning, right? They have gradually come up with time. So let us see, what was the mode of communication when these things were not there? So do you think when telephone or mobile or radio, when all these things were not there, people never used to communicate with each other? Do you think it was like that? No, right? Even during those days, people used to communicate with each other. But the mode of communication was quite different. So let us have a look at the ancient mode of communication. So I missed out quite a few here. You also have the email. Right? You have the letters. So these are again modes of communication over large distances. Okay. So now let us talk about the communication, which the modes of communication rather in the ancient times. So how things got communicated between different people when there was no system of sending letters, when there was no system of sending an email or a mobile phone, nothing was there. So how did people communicate? during those days. So during those ancient times, there used to be kingdoms. There used to be kings who used to rule their own kingdoms, right? But let us suppose these are two different kingdoms ruled by two different kings. Now, this king one, this king wants to send some information to the other king. So maybe it, it can be anything. It can be an intimation of war that he is going to attack the kingdom two, let us call this as kingdom one and let us call this as kingdom two. So maybe the king one wants to send an intimation to king two that, okay, I'm going to attack your kingdom or he wants to call for a war. So now since there is no mobile phone, no provision to send letters, so how do you think will this king communicate the same to the other king? So what used to happen during those days? There used to be a person whose job was to communicate the message from one person to the other person. So whatever the king will say or whatever the message which the king will have, he will note that down 
and then this person this man will walk all the way from kingdom 1 to kingdom 2 no matter how much ever the distance may be no matter how much ever time it takes for that person to walk from kingdom 1 to kingdom 2 so it will reach kingdom 2 and give the same message to king 2 right so this was how communication happened in very ancient days now then it was found that it was really really hectic for that mediator or that person who actually carries the information from one to two because first of all he has to walk such a long distance which is not an easy job it was also time consuming i mean if you want to send something some an, an urgent information which you want the to be reached in another few minutes it was not possible at, at all at that time because this person who is going to walk all the way will definitely need a good amount of time so what was the solution so they thought okay let us make the process little faster so how did they do that now instead of walking they provided this person with a horse so now this person could save his energy in walking so he is not going to waste energy in walking and obviously the horse is going to run and it, it is definitely going to take lesser time right so that was another option of sending the information a little faster again they found that even this was time consuming even though it was better than the previous one but still it was also quite time consuming and also if this person so that this information transfer was completely dependent on this one person so in case he fell ill or something happened to him the informa information is not going to reach to its destination so they came up with another solution which was even better than this so what did they do they established small small towers in between the two kingdoms like here you can see some three towers were established now what happened was in each tower there used to be one person and what was the job of this person to transmit the message for example whatever the king whatever the message king one had he sent the same message to this tower now here you can see the distance to this tower is relatively less so it is definitely going to take a lesser time for somebody to send this information to this person now what will happen this person who is present at this tower he will shout so when he shouts, at least the nearby areas will be able to get that information. So as a result, this tower being in within the nearby area of the tower one will get the information. Again, the person in this tower will shout to spread the information. Now the third tower being in the vicinity of the second tower will get the information. So this man will again shout and that is how the information will gradually reach the other kingdom. So in this case, what happened? There is no man, there is no horse, no waste of energy, no waste of time. Because here nobody is running from one place to another. It is just that as soon as the person in tower one shouts, this man in tower two is able to hear. As soon as he hears it, he shouts and immediately he is able to hear. So the process became very fast. Right? There is no waste of time. As soon as the information comes to the one to the first tower, it reaches the second, then it reaches the third, it reaches the fourth, and finally it reaches the destiny. Right? So these were some of the ways by which communication took place in ancient times. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material. Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.